In 1992, Rich Donnelly was on top of his game. He was a winning coach with a winning team, the Pittsburgh Pirates. Rich was looking forward to the new season, and then one phone call suddenly changed everything. It was from his 17-year-old daughter, Amy. She said, Dad, I got something I got to tell you. And I thought, my God, well, what is it? She goes, Dad, I have a brain tumor, and I'm sorry. And uh, I just thought, you know, my God, she's apologizing for getting a brain tumor to, to her dad. But Amy was determined to get better, and she never let months of grueling chemotherapy treatments get her down. I'd go see her at the hospital, and she'd, she'd make sure she'd have a smile on her face. She was tough as nails. Amy was into baseball as much as her three brothers, and she loved cheering on her dad. She was the biggest fan I think I've ever met in my life. And she knew the game of baseball, and, and baseball meant like a lot to her because she knew it meant a lot to me and my dad and my brothers. Amy's dad always talked about making it to the World Series, so his dream became her dream. When Pittsburgh won the division championship that year, the dream was within reach. In the fall, she came to see me. It was the fifth game of the playoffs. The Pirates were playing Atlanta, and we won the game. And after the game was over, she was in the back seat of the car, and she leaned forward, and she said, Dad, she says, well, you get down in that stance with the man on second. You cup your hands, and you get down like this. She says, what are you telling those guys? A chicken runs at midnight or what? And I went, what? I said, where'd you come up with that? Amy laughed and told her dad. It just came out. I don't know what it is. Amy stayed behind for chemotherapy treatments while the team traveled to Atlanta for the final game of the playoff series. When the Pirates got to the Fulton County Stadium, Rich couldn't believe what was waiting for him at the clubhouse. They said, there's a message for you, Rich, and the girl brought it down. It was a little note that says, Dear Dad, the chicken runs at midnight. Love, Amy. And as I was holding the note, we had a second baseman named Jose Lind. And Jose didn't speak very good English. And he says, hey, what's these? And I went, chicken runs at midnight. He goes, okay, good. Now he goes on the field to shake hands with everybody. He told all of our players, the chicken runs at midnight, the chicken runs at midnight, not knowing anything about where that came from. And, the, and pretty soon, in the dugout, the whole team was going, let's go to chicken runs at midnight. And Amy was home, and she was with her brother Tim watching the game. And when Jose Lynn ran out on the field yelling the chicken runs at midnight, she heard it. Amy and her brother went crazy. Five words that made no sense at all instantly became the family motto. They said, the chicken runs at midnight, and they had their pom-poms going, and they had everything set up right in front of the TV watching the game. But when the final out was made, there wasn't much to cheer about. Well, as fate would have it, we lost that game and did not get to go to the World Series. For Rich, the loss would be his last chance to share that dream with his daughter. Three months later, Amy lapsed into a coma. It is that she wasn't going to make it. You never think of a, this would ever come about, where you have to walk in and tell your daughter goodbye. And, uh... <laughs> There's so many things you want to say to her, besides you love her. So many things you want to say to her. I thanked her for everything she did for us. I thanked her for all the strength she's given me. On January 28, 1993, Amy passed away. She was only 17. The Donnelly family chose to honor Amy in death with the words that meant so much to her in life. We all said, you guys think chicken runs at midnight. We didn't think about it one second. We were all, yeah, that has to be it. It's probably one of the craziest things you'll see on a tombstone ever, but that's our family motto, and it's what we wanted. Every time you visit the gravesite, well, it's there, and it makes you chuckle a little bit about her, because that's her. Four years later, in 1997, Pirates manager Jim Leland left to become skipper of the Florida Marlins. Rich followed his boss south. And we had a nice team down there. We're hoping, uh, you know, it's going to be okay. And they were dreaming about anything. So as fate would have it, we get into the playoffs. The Marlins upset the Atlanta Braves in six games to win the National League crown. Rich was finally going to the fall classic. 
and he was thrilled. It's something that ever since you've been eight years old, five years old, you dream about this, the World Series. The powerhouse Cleveland Indians were favored to win, but after six games, the series was tied at three apiece. Now we go to the seventh game of the World Series. Two of Rich's sons, Tim and Mike, joined their dad in the dugout. So Tim had been the bat boy every game, in uniform. And this game, they were both in uniform. Game seven in Miami, the Marlins tied the score in the ninth, sending the game into extra innings. In the bottom of the 11th, the Marlins loaded the bases. Now it's two outs, and all we need is one run. A million emotions are going through my head at third base. And we had a second baseman who was on third. He was the runner, Craig Council. And my kids called him Chicken Wing because when he hit, he held his elbow up high. Edgar Renteria stepped to the plate. With two out and the World Series on the line, Indians ace reliever Charles Nagy went into his windup. Craig Council trotted home from third base and was mobbed by his teammates. I jumped about 12 feet in the air. I mean, the place is absolute madness. But even that incredible moment didn't compare to what happened next. I was just overcome. And my two sons, Tim and Mike, they're jumping there. Everybody's going crazy. And Tim came out, and he jumped up in my arms. And he said, Dad, look. He's screaming. Look at the clock. The exact time was 12 midnight. And he said, Dad, the chicken ran at midnight. And I went, oh, my God. Uh, I, I just stunned. I was just stunned. Every, every emotion in my body was just limp. Craig Council, the chicken, scored the winning run at midnight. Amy knew how much that meant to me. She knew. She was there. She had to be there. There was no doubt in my mind. When the bedlam finally died down, Rich grabbed the phone message Amy left him four years earlier. He had carried it with him all that time. The night that we won the World Series, I pulled that note out. And it was like, uh, it was like I wanted to call her. I, I wanted to call her and tell her it did, the chicken did run at midnight. It did.